I designed this fill light holder for my friend, optimized it for manufacturing, reducing the price, printed it 3D, and ordered it online. Now it's time to see if I can assemble them. If this ball doesn't fit into this joint, I've basically wasted 200 bucks. My friend Ali has recently started his new YouTube channel and he is using these fill lights for his background. They are great, except that making them stand straight is an issue. His lights needs to just stand and he asked me if I can design something to help him out. He asked for a flat piece of something to screw to the bottom of the lights, but me being me cannot stop there. I wanted to make something that can be a little bit more sophisticated and is worth my time because designing something flat isn't really challenging. Something that can be adjustable, not just some flat piece of board that sits on his desk. I wanted to design something that can A, hold the light, B, I want it to be adjustable and set angles, C, looks appealing, and lastly, durable. Not lastly, it should also be affordable. So five things. I played around with an idea like this until I remembered I received a sample from Form Labs. This video is not sponsored by the way, that looked like a ball and joint, something like this. So I started making this design. The most important element I had to base my design on was the circumference of the light. So I asked him to put the light on a piece of gridded paper and draw its circumference around it. From there on, it was easy. All I had to do was to bring that image onto SOLIDWORKS, scale it based on those tiny grids, which are five millimeters long each. And from there on, I started making the design. Also, if you want me to show you how I made the design exactly, I will upload the process of designing this whole thing in SOLIDWORKS in a different video. I will get to that. Once I was happy with the design, I decided to make it more personalized with the logo. So I went on to his website, copied his logo and saved it as PNG so I can import it in SOLIDWORKS and turn it into a solid component. Deciding the tolerance between the ball and joint was something I had to take a smart guess. And I decided since the components are going to be made 3D, uh, they are going to have a bit of flexibility. So I decided to make the joints hold slightly smaller than the diameter of the ball to push them together so they would stay there. Once the design was ready, I had to ask for a quote to 3D print this. I went on Protolabs, which I knew would 3D print stuff. Also, at the same time, I went to Protic, whom I worked with quite a lot in the past. None of them are sponsored, by the way. Initial prices shocked me. It is only a light stand and it shouldn't cost so much. So since the 3D printing cost comes mostly from the printing duration, and since the printing duration comes mostly from the 3D volume, I decided to reduce volume of the object as much as I can and try it again. At first, I created some cavities in the design to reduce the material, but since the outer dimensions were the same, I decided to design smaller with thinner walls and everything, but it should still hold the light. So I went to iteration two. The price was still too high for what it does, but what gives? Let's give it a shot. I ordered the parts, waited three days, and... It's time to give it a shot, which brings me to now, this moment. The ball doesn't fit into the joint, as the material I ordered it in is PA12, it's not flexible at all. So I wanted to try something. I cleaned the edges around the joint a bit using my knife while I put the ball into iced water to shrink it. Uh, does it work? I don't know. I give it a push. Yeah, it worked amazingly. So all I have to do now is to screw a bunch of screws into these holes to tighten the ball in its position. It does work, but I noticed a design flaw. I originally put the two holes 180 degrees from each other, so they actually created some sort of an, an axis effect. The ball was tight, but you could rotate it around this axis because the holes, the screws, were aligned. All I had to do was to drill a new hole to break this alignment, which I did, and it just fixed everything. The ball was super tight, 
Uh, Sky Tales of Stone, I don't know if you can actually say that makes no sense, but it was super tight and it did the magic. Since Ali doesn't live too far away, let's take it to him and surprise him with this because it's much better than what he thought. What's up, Haji? The whole thing took me two hours to plan and design, one hour to iterate, 100 euros or 130 bucks US dollars uh, to prepare and about four days of waiting. Finally, I have it on my desk. One important thing I learned from this project was that the feeling of PA12. I am currently working on my next project, which is going to be a, I'm not going to reveal it, but it is going to be over 20 kilograms and I needed to know if this 3D printed material, PA12, can hold that weight. And now I'm convinced it can. Now, if you'd like to see how I designed this whole thing from scratch, how I calculated the tolerances and the rest, subscribe to the channel right now so when I post that video, you won't miss it. My SolidWorks Course Pro trains you with a new teaching approach that makes reaching the CSWP or professional level in SolidWorks a piece of cake, especially if you are an absolute beginner. If you're interested in learning SolidWorks flawlessly and have zero knowledge whatsoever, SolidWorks Course Pro makes it super easy for you to understand and follow. It provides you with all sorts of support, practice material, and assessment. In addition to all of that, you will also start your journey with one hour of free class and a free mini course. Click on the link in the description below or on the info card on the top right corner of the screen to go and check it out. I'll see you soon. Me to video tagging.